So let me share with you quickly what am I going to cover. Most of the times we confuse between these three similar meanings, supposedly similar words or terms, biodata, CV, and resume. But today I'm going to debunk the myth for you, segregate the qualities and the relatability or suitability of these three very important professional profile documents that we are going to prepare for all of you. In fact, this will also be valuable information for you to present your profile, how to write a good resume and share a sample resume for better clarity. Now let's first come to biodata. Biodata is biographical data and most of us think that it is usually required for matrimonial purposes. That is why it is not a very important professional document, but that is farther from the truth. Biographical data is made or presented by people who have at least 10 to 12 years of experience in the industry in their line. So people getting into research projects who have been studying a particular subject after class 10 have studied that academic subject from the research perspective from 10 to 12 years will make a bio data. Bio data or biographical data is 80% personal in nature. Bio means biology personal and graphical means over a period of time so 10 to 12 years of experience is minimum required for presenting a biodata it runs in chronological order beginning from the top the beginning of our accomplishments degrees work experience and going forward it has questions on or it has inputs on choices of religion nationality political ideology so on and so forth. So when does a, uh, an organization use biodata? When it is hiring its CXOs. At that level, a company or a private entity want to, wants to know what is it that drives or motivates this individual to take decisions. What is their inclination towards certain aspects in their ethos, in their society? Because at such a high level, the person is perhaps going to be the sole authority to sanction mobilization of resources for, the, for that organization spanning across the globe. It is also used while we are hiring uh, research scholars, while we are hiring bureaucrats, uh, people at high administrative positions within the government, within public sector undertakings, just because it has all the details. A biodata runs into number of pages of an A4 size sheet, very elaborately presented, font style flowing like italics, borders, picture goal, recent photograph going on top of it, and five to six pages of an A4 size sheet, almost like a profile. Because when someone is applying to such a high post, the applicants are very few because very few make the eligibility criteria. And when someone is at such a high level, at such a prestigious position going to be a part of that top rank, then the company, the organization needs to be very thorough, wants to be very thorough. So it has no problem. The recruiter has no challenge in going through five or six pages. As it is, the applicants are less. Besides, the thoroughness is completed only by reading all that is available about that person. So the trajectory of life is somewhat included in a biographical data. Furthermore, a biographical data is used for freshers when a university asks its student to fill up a set of questions. They have an admission questionnaire. Why do you want to study this course? Why do you want to study with us? Why this country? What would you bring to the table if we allow you to be a student with us? That is a questionnaire and that's called a biographical data when that questionnaire is completed. Because every university organization or institution wants to ensure that it is inviting or including a correct, suitable and positive element within its ranks of employees or students. It describes everything in details and um, it is used when one has 10 to 12 years of experience. So when we uh, also apply for, uh, you know, uh, when we have people applying for the post of guards, gardeners, then also their bio data is requested because these are those jobs when one needs to ensure reliability and strong character and sound values and ethics that will only come by looking into their personal life, their personality. So that is why 80% personal details and 20% professional details. 
biodata is usually um, done in a manner wherein uh, we have our uh, experience first then our education then certain other areas of interest then who all are there in our family what they do where they're settled and all that but if there is a format provided by the organization that too has to be filled up in detail and that becomes our biodata from the looks of it biodata is perhaps helpful for all the scholars academicians here who are a part of the session but not your students because they do not have that much of experience or that much of uh, history to talk about so let's move forward to the second type of document and that is cv or curriculum vitae curriculum vitae is the latin term which means the course of life again please see there is course which is over a period of time and life which again means personal details so while the biodata has 80% personal details here the cv has 60% personal details and rest are professional details yet since it has a course of life connotation to it it means that there is at least 5 to 6 years of work experience to be able to make a curriculum vitae it does not have a clear specific um, part or portion of it dedicated to skills but it does list out all our history of work and education talking about what were the positions held what were the key responsibility areas they may or may not be a description of skills why because this is a birds eye view of a person who's ready to enter into the middle level management rung where he or she would not actually be performing the tasks associated with those technical skills and competencies rather should know these tasks how they are done but more work or more responsibility of this person is to be a team leader to manage people to see how resources within the department not only human but other resources are allocated by various people and manage them so these are the people who will make a cv now certain in certain situations freshers can also make a cv ladies and gentlemen you must have seen come across the advertisement in the newspaper wherein they say walk in interviews so there is such and such organization that is conducting walk in interviews for these job profiles there are 3 4 or 5 job profiles listed and against each profile their number of vacancies are left Uh, listed 10 5 6 7 whatever and they say basic minimum qualification is this let's say btech <clears throat> let's say bca basic minimum qualification is this and they say walk in interviews are happening at such and such venue on such and such dates or within such and such time now in that case the child the student does not have the ability to determine which company it wants to work for or does not have the ability to determine the dream job even if the company is the one that he or she wants to work in but out of these various profiles which have a vacancy which is the profile that he or she wants to work for cannot be determined because they will make a birds eye view of all that they have done till now and present it to the recruiter the recruiter will take interviews on the basis of that cv and at the end of the entire recruitment process will decide which applicant is suitable for which profile so although freshers can make a curriculum vitae but that is not helpful for a campus placement scenario this curriculum vitae is also chronological in order beginning from the beginning and going to the present times it is perhaps one to two sheets because the experience is not that uh, long the duration is lesser and there is not uh, a clear mention of skills as it was earlier in biodata where there was no mention of skills at all so again this has a ostentatious display of text borders are there margins are there pictures there we are using a lot of space to make a very impressive uh, impression a very elaborate impression uh, to um, in the recruitment process that is what a cv is if you look at the campus placement scenario situation no recruiter was to go through 1000 profiles so let's say 500 profiles will have the patience to read all the two pages of a cv 
I guess I have some kind of a um, question in the chat box. You know, look at that. Uh, Rama Devi ma'am has said good morning. Good morning, ma'am. If there's someone who has a question for me, I will request you to please unmute yourself and put the question to me. That will be very helpful because I, otherwise I'll keep shifting screens. All right. So like I said, number of pages, two to three, ostentatious display of text, photograph goes. There's no clear mention of skills, but a history beginning from the beginning to the recent times and experience of between five to six years. Then a CV is made. So what is relevant when a campus placement scenario is happening when the recruiter has to go through so many profiles to know which are the ones who are shortlisted for the next stage, perhaps the GD, the guest estimate round, the technical interview round, and then finally the HR interview round. That is the resume. Resume is a French word which means summary. So what do I summarize? Like the first salesperson, not everything, but like the third salesperson, those three products, please look at these three exercises first. Please look at these three specific skills first. And if you're still uh, wanting, looking for more, then I will mention my other skills at the time permits, space permits within that section. Because resume is just one side of an A4 sheet. Because even if the resume lands at the top of the stack, the middle of the stack, the bottom of the stack, the recruiter will go through it. If it is second sheet and even though it looks appealing, may keep it aside for later. And by the time he or she has gone through the entire stack fields, oh, I've got enough shortlisted people. Though he's nice, oh, but maybe perhaps at the time. Because nobody's doing special favors here. It highlights only specific skills which are required for that job. And how do I know which skills are those? Go to the company's website. Look at clearly look read understand their pre-placement seminar it has only 24 hours it is only 24 hours or four hours or five hours before the placement process but that can be quickly tweaked in the resume if one has already made a clear resume by knowing by gauging by guessing that if i am working at such and such profile in this industry these would be the skills that are required for me and then it is customized to a target job profile. So number of profiles that one student is applying to the end number of resumes. So they keep changing, tweaking a little bit here and there. Someone comes who says, I do not want a bottle holder in the exercise cycle, but I want the folding exercise cycle. So that bottle holder, good thing is shoved out and being foldable is presented in the skills and competencies section. So this is what a resume is, and this is how a resume should be used by the students when it is a campus placement scenario. Because what is separating one exercise cycle from the other is the specific skills, are those specific features which can only be highlighted and presented in a resume. Resume is a skill-based document. It is not an experience-based document. So while my students have not had the opportunity to be employed but they do have the required skill set, albeit they have been demonstrated in an academic sphere. But the moment they come to job, those skills of having good relationship with others will come handy when one becomes a public relationship officer. So that is why a resume is the most relevant for freshers. Now, a resume also has three types of uh, three types of resumes. Let's talk about them. Now, resume, like I said, is a skill based document. So today I can drive a car to reach from place A to B. In my childhood, I could I would ride a bicycle to reach from point A to B. If given an opportunity today between the bicycle and the car, what would I choose? I will choose the car because that driving the car skill is the one that I have been practicing recently and feel comfortable in it. Not that I will not know how to ride a bicycle. If a bicycle is kept there, I'll get on it and I'll quickly get back the skill of or refresh my memory of how to ride a bicycle. But my comfort, my proficiency lies in the driving of a car. So resume is a skill based document. That is why the skill that I practiced recently is the skill that is most enhanced in my profile. And that is why a resume is reverse chronological in order. So coming from the most recent accomplishment or a most recent uh, internship history at the top and going down to the last 
uh, to the uh, to the last two, three, or four more because their space is less. So I will not include everything in that single page document. Let them ask the students some questions. Let the students dangle the bait in the resume. Let the students only put cues to conversation starters in the interview room on the resumes and not populate or stuff it with all the information. Because if resume is sufficient, then why would they have an interview? Just looking at the resume is sufficient to decide, then why would they have an interview? No, they want to know the child personally. I want to know the excess title, touch and feel it, because it's a huge investment. That is why even if I know all the pictures, three-dimensional view, virtual reality of the exercise cycle, how it feels, simulator and all, but I still like to look at the physical model. That is why what the resume does only puts cues for conversation starters and ladies and gentlemen by putting those cues properly we can predict 80 percent of the interview so building a resume is something different writing it something different and if both these things are done appropriately getting a job especially the job that we want is 80 to 90 percent guaranteed so please do not take it lightly because resume is the first piece of communication that goes out from the students to the recruiter. Even before they have met the student, the recruiter determines a pen picture, determines an image of the applicant in their mind on the basis of what they have put down in the resume. The first type of resume is functional resume, which focuses mainly on skills and it highlights transferable skills, skills which can be transferred from one situation to another. If my students have done a particular project on sports car making or a particular project on robotic uh, arm limbs for amputees, they will be able to transfer these skills in my manufacturing unit setup wherein we make AI supported prosthetic limbs. So this is a transferable skill which becomes relevant in a professional capacity. Just because it talks about transferable skills, not actual skills in the real industry, that is why it is very pertinent. This kind of a resume is very pertinent for freshers. Also for people taking a gap in their employment because uh, they are uh, then um, they have the skills, but they have not been recently applied in any kind of a professional setup. The second type of a resume is chronological resume. Although it is chronological, but it is still written in reverse chronological uh, manner, but it is for those who have a brief history of work, less than five years. What do they do? They make a resume for your, themselves, which give the most recent work experience and the skills extracted or demonstrated while being at that position. For people taking a sabbatical, for people, um, you know, taking a sabbatical to study between their bachelor's and master's and then returning to work. Chronological resume is a good one, is a good option for them. Then comes a hybrid resume, which talks about both the number of uh, jobs that one has held and also the skills. So if someone has had within a short period of time, number of profiles or jobs within the same industry, they can use a hybrid resume. But the only challenge with this is that one conveys the impression of being a job hopper when that may be different from reality. So I had a student who wanted to be an actor in the movies. So she first went on to be an actor on the stage. Then she went on to be a prop, uh, uh, a, a prop assistant to the director. Then she went on to be the stage assistant to the person setting up the stage and background. Then she went on to be an assistant director, then a producer's assistant, then finally getting into acting into the movies. Why did she do all this? So that she could understand the art and craft of acting and making movies so that when her she was actually performing in front of the camera, she could understand what other technicians and artists involved in the whole process are looking at or expecting from her when she's delivering her performance. So in her case, it was a hybrid resume. So creative fields permit a hybrid resume easily because they provide a holistic view of a particular art form, which a creative artist or a creative professional is going to use. So out of all the uh, two 
and five types of documents that I've shared with you, ladies and gentlemen. Functional resume is the one that our students should use while undergoing a campus placement scenario or even otherwise. Now, this is the last slide that I'm going to show you, and then I'm going to refer to the sample. A, a resume is a single page document. There are no borders, nothing, because we are saving space. We write sparsely on it so that it does not come across as too many words stuffed in a short space. So the font style size also needs to be managed. Some people think that they can write more text by reducing the font size to 9.5 when the acceptable is 10.5 or 11. Because people who are recruiting also have are of certain age. And by that time, there are challenges with the eyesight and troubling them making it inconvenient for them to look at their children's resume, the applicant's resume is not going to serve the applicant's purpose. So it is so rather than stuffing the resume with all the details with smaller font size, advise the students to remove certain lesser important details and put all the content in an acceptable, easily readable font size. It never ever goes into the second page so don't think that the students can get away with writing or printing at the back side because then that would cloud the print on the top side as well. If at all it goes, then I'll tell you how the second sheet is to be used. There's a clear distinction or breakup of the resume in three parts. The header, the footer. The header just has contact information. The footer is left empty as exclusive reserved space for the recruiter to note down their comments about the applicant during the interview. So 80% of the page space is the only space available to put our relevant details. 10% header, 10% footer. And it is a balance of accomplishments and responsibilities. Just because it talks about, I have a bottle holder, I have a digital display board, I am motorized, too much of I, I, I may make or may make uh, may sound that the applicant is very swollen headed narcissist overconfident and may put off the recruiter in the first glance itself at the resume that is why to cull the effect of this direct accomplishments the resume is written in the third person and it is in reverse chronological order let me show you a sample resume which is of an actual applicant from uicet punjab university and this boy got recruited with Reliance Industries. And I'll share with you how by putting details in a specific manner in the resume, we predicted the interview and how it helped the child. Allow me a sip of water, please. I hope this document is visible to everyone. I have expanded the size of it. This is the resume that I wanted to share with all of you. Now, please look at this document. I'm scrolling down it. Very simple looking document, simple sheet of paper, single page. And this is how the document looks. This is what a good resume is. Let me contract its size so that I can give you an idea of. Now you see on your screen the header and the footer together. The header and the footer are 10% page space at the top and 10% page space at the bottom. This itself has no information about the profile. All the information about the profile is, is in the 80% page space. If I take a look at this resume from a distance, I see that it is sparsely worded. Where my cursor is moving right now, you see lots of space for the interviewer to record comments. There's space at the top, in the header, between the three portions of information provided, then between the first two headings of the main body, then in just towards the right corner of the third heading or the third subsection of the main body, then finally in the section which has personal details, enough space, and then finally exclusive space, not even a single character type in the footer. Why, is, why are we doing this? More the space 
for the interviewer to note down their comments, the more is the recall value, the higher the recall value, the higher are the chances of getting recruited. So this is how a resume has to be worded. And believe you me, the star in the interview room is not the resume, but the applicant. So the students should not try to steal or allow the resume to steal the limelight from them, spotlight from them by putting in gimmicks like columns, newspaper columns, uh, resume in the form of newspaper columns. Some background is, uh, you know, some text box has colored background, other has something else. Are you trying to confuse the recruiter? Or are you trying to make it easy for the recruiter? The easier it is, the better are the chances of the student getting hired. Let's examine each and every aspect of this resume intricately to understand this better. All right. So now let's look at the header. The header has three sections, the photograph on the leftmost side, the center name, and towards the right, we have the contact information. A person reads from left to right. So where does the eyesight settle down? It settles down on the right corner. That is where we give the most valuable information for ourselves. That is how to get in touch with us. Residential address, if we are staying in the hostel, we give the hostel's address, not our permanent address. Why? So that our communication responses can be prompt. In addition to sending WhatsApp messages, messages on LinkedIn and emails, companies will also send uh, official information, intimation through the traditional mail, and that is the post mail. That is why they need the residential address. Also, when the child is uh, showing the residential address of hostel in, let's say, Room number 234, um, Hall A, um, Maharana Pratap Hostel, Ward 1, Punjab University, Chandigarh. So that shows that the, this immediately implies to the recruiter that this child has moved out of his city, is living away from the comfort of his family. And let me take a look at his performance then. How does he perform under stress? How does he perform in different alien unknown situations? Do you see interpretations of the personality are happening through a small thing as the, as the address, the residential address. Further corroboration, whether he or she is living in a different city, even if it is not a hostel, a paying guest accommodation, but when the child provides their class 10th, class 12th marks, then they can talk about which school, which city, very briefly put it here. And then if there's a difference in cities, the recruiter can come to know that they have relocated. And there can come a question. Why were you living earlier in Aurangabad and now you're studying in Chandigarh? These are the questions we can preempt. We can foresee would be happening in the interview room and prepare relevant answers which will make the recruiter pick us. I'll tell you how. Residential address, then comes the phone number. If it is the phone number like nine, double nine, double eight, triple zero, nine zero two, all are round digits, except for two, which is in any case coming at the end. Please segregate them into blocks of five or blocks of two, two, three, three. This is how I do with my email address, with my phone number. Next comes the email address. The email address should not have any digits why because l small l can look like one zero can look like o the very important email can go in to the spam will not reach because of a small error most of the times universities have their uh, standard profile in which the entire information like punjab university also has the entire information in that booklet and the same booklet is presented to every company that comes for campus placement but ladies and gentlemen, if the child has done their research and at the time of the interview walks in and says that, um, hello, sir, hello, madam, I know you have all the details of my profile, but I still took the courage to prepare a resume, which I think will be more pertinent to your requirements. Can I present it to you now? Even if the recruiter says, I do not want it. But by having said this, the child, the applicant suggests that he or she is very eager and is making special efforts to get recruited. Not like everybody else. If it's uh, if I'm recruited, good enough. If I'm 
it is giving a very clear distinct clue of their proactive approach and will give them brownie points so encourage them to write a resume now once sometimes the universe organizations have their own format in that in that case the database the software picks up information from that particularly formatted form to fill out their profile and populates the database at that time if the software comes across a digit in the email address it is going to declare that entire profile that entire resume as invalid and the details will not get registered in any case uh, you know having email addresses like um, i had um, muskan 0411 ahuja at gmail.com student coming to me and date of birth was not asked by that company because they did not want to be affected by the gender so they did not even want the photograph of the child they wanted the name of course that would give away the gender and they did not want the date of birth but by putting 0411 i asked her is 4th november your birth date in a mock interview she said yes so i said do you have a fatalist attitude why did you put this she said no i do not have a fatalist attitude but muskan who is such a common name and i wanted her in the email address only on gmail so i thought why not put this i said so you are not aware that one should not have um, digits in their uh, email address she said oh no i do not know supposedly youngster supposedly tech savvy but totally unaware of the etiquette then i said why do you want an email address on gmail only did you not try by mail yahoo mail redif mail outlook any where else she said no because it's the trend everybody's got an email address on gmail and besides have a store uh, transporting heavier files is easier so convenience trend is the attitude that this girl is going to bring to work do i want to hire her no so these kinds of assumptions which could be different from reality but definitely come into the mind of the recruiter even without interviewing the child even before interviewing the applicant so much is conveyed for the same reason to keep the soft copy lighter we do not have any punctuation marks towards the end of the line so if you'll see residential address room number 234 comma hall a next line no comma after hall a it should include pin code because if they're sending something by traditional mail post mail uh, bits and parts of the address are correct and pin code is there it is definitely going to re reach now let's come to the name which should come in the center and not the title resume no that's not there that's not should that should not be there the product entering the job market is the applicant and the applicant's name the product's name should be highlighted if one's name appears as ms dhoni on their certificate so it should be ms dhoni but if it appears as mahendra singh dhoni then mahendra singh dhoni should be written here completely now ladies and gentlemen one can keep into mind the writing and speaking mechanics of the organization if it is a company based in the us japan then it follows writing and speaking mechanics pertinent to the american culture so americans will put a dot after m will put a dot after s initials but in british writing mechanics we do not put a dot so ms dhoni will come without a dot no titles no degrees will come here before the name photograph will go on the leftmost side only if it is asked for if it is not asked for it will not be there and it will never be stuck to the resume so we went to thapar institute of engineering and technology in patiala and it was mock interview for infosys and we knew that they taken up a project in the us so they would be requiring mass recruitment was happening um on a very short notice so we knew that they would be uh, you know picking up students and sending them to the us after in an initial training in india of one month or so so we advise the students to get because uh, infosys had said get multiple passport size photographs click so we told the students to click their recent photographs passport size photographs according to the us visa requirements ears should be visible 80% face white background so on and so forth and uh, we told this uh, girl also who was appearing to not stick or staple her photograph but put it with a discreet clip but she was worried that it would be separated she stuck it and she was selected she forgot to carry extra copies in the interview folder into the interview room she said i'll provide the extra copies of the photograph to you um, by the end of the day because they needed it for documentation purposes and perhaps they even wanted to start corporate visas for these students who were selected 
So that's this why they were asking for multiple um, photographs. And but she said, I have a soft copy which I can email to you immediately as soon as I leave the interview room. So what they did was, okay, provide us with the photographs. They peeled off that photograph. The resume, which is a normal looking sheet of paper, got separated from the sheet and it was torn at the corner. So much of mayhem was happening. The resume landed, it was lost somewhere. Where it was, one does not know. She got the job, but she delayed. She was delayed by six months to reach the US. So that is how her seniority was left. You know, she lost it. So how can one take care of it? At the back of the photograph with the fine tip pen, write the name and the contact information, the way it appears on the resume. So even if it is, you know, disassociated, it is separated from the resume, the photograph can be assigned to the name, to the resume. There will be no damage to the resume. Even if the recruiter wants to take the photograph, can take it without damaging the uh, resume itself. So that there is this ordinary looking sheet of paper does not come across as a waste paper. The clear distinction between the three portions have to be visible through this line that separates the header to the rest from the rest of the body. The first thing that one writes about is objective. Objective is usually uh, students say, I want to work in a growing organization to enhance my skill set and fulfill my potential. So what is there in it for the company to hire you? It's not open charity. So the objective should have clear three parts. Why, wh why do you want to work? What is the special thing that you bring to the table? And what is it that you look for the for yourself by getting this job? So there are three things that should come within this objective. So aim to utilize its complete utilize its complete potential, my unique skill set. So this guy was asked, Bhaiya, tumne siraf, you've only written three things in your skill set here, right? And then you made a tall claim of unique skill set. Tell me how it is unique. Because when this guy had first made his resume, he had 16 points in his skills and awards. And the resume was two complete sheets. We said, and he was getting rejected in every campus placement. So he came to us. So I said, we will put bait or cues in the resume wherein questions will be asked. But we will highlight only those specific skills which are going to be helpful for you to get into Reliance because that was the only company left now. So name will come after that objective, objective first, unique skill set, then thereby contributing. So what is it that you that the organized stands to gain, what you bring to the table, how the organization is going to gain and what you want to gain. That is how this sentence is framed only here. And in the disclaimer is the first person used here. It is used as my possessive pronoun just once, not I aim to utilize. I is still avoided. And even at the bottom, you'll see this uh, already formed sentence. The information furnished above is true and correct to the best of my knowledge. No, I first person direct first person is not coming because then it means that you're shouting too much for attention and perhaps overconfident. So this is how students can go on to pick up one relevant skill which they feel is going to be the bedrock of this role and responsibility and say I have this which I'm going to use for developing the company's R&D center or the latest locomotive vehicle project and thereby uh, enhance my such and such skill. So this is how it is going to seem relevant. Now questions in this part can come from the residential address if this is the, it is a hostel. Questions can even come from name. For example, in my case, if I'm appearing for interview for Taj and I'm asked as part of the ice breaking question, Sudhiti, what is the meaning of your name? I will tell them that, you know, my grandmother named me, keeping in mind the family tradition of naming everybody with the SU. My father is Sunil, Chacha Ji is Sanju. All my aunts are Suman, Sunanda. My grandfather was Sudhir. So that is how I am Sudhiti and my younger sister is Sumeda. Now, what am I doing is I know that Tata Taj Hotels values family relationships, um, family values and how one is strongly attached to these um, uh, to these aspects of close familial bonds, because this is what they're looking for in the role of someone working in their hotels who would have formed close familial bonds with the guests. I'll answer this question from that perspective, having preempted the question. Now, again, if I am interviewed, 
by a sports consulting uh, firm in Bangalore, Sports Matrix. And they asked me, Suditi, what is the uh, meaning of your name? As just when they are going through my resume and uh, you know trying to uh, break the ice. Now this is this may seem like oh, a very easy question. I will request all the participants to please be on mute, but it has very wide implications. So in that case, telling sports matrix, which is a very new age concept consulting firm, telling them about family values and traditions is not going to help. So I tell them that I am named after auspicious beginning. I was the first child of the next generation, and it literally means auspicious sunrise. Now that is something that is relevant to sports metrics. But how do I know this? I went to the website of sports metrics and found that all the board of directors were in their 40s when the company was founded in 2015. So they are new age, new thinkers for them, newness new beginning is something that is going to resonate so that is how i tweak my answer so what i'm sharing here is i do my research i know the values vision mission statement of the company and the objective of the company and according to those according around those keywords and those values i frame all my answers so that everything seems to be converging at the same point and i come across as the hand that fits the glove of the company Next is skills and awards, because more than education, it is the skills and awards that separates me from my peers. What you see on your screens right now, ladies and gentlemen, is that part of the resume that is always going to be read. So putting our date of birth here or here or putting our father's mother's details is not going to help them to hire me. What is going to help them to determine whether they should hire me is the skills and awards. Now you'll see that we have put a skill set one skill set acquired from many activities. So instead of when he had put APA in this year, NanoSciTech in this year, Chascon in this year, we have done away with this year because things were spread across various years. So we could not put years here. Rather, we combined these activities to show a plethora of them. Multiple engagements leading to consolidation of these skills. Then comes... <clears throat> interpersonal build, team building skills. Then he talked about golf ball. He was talk, He was put a question about golf ball because in any case, this person looked very studious, little stoutly built, thick glasses. Unko, nobody could make out that this guy would be playing a sport. And that too, what is golf ball? And you're winning something in golf ball which nobody actually plays. It's almost like, you know, <clears throat> being a leader where there, where there are no not many players. So then he went on to go and explain, prepared the answer and said that I am not shy to try something new. Though we were the laughing stock of our peers and friends, but yet we played this very funny looking game and without much um, training or much knowledge available or many coaches available at that time, we went on to secure the first position within the zone and third position within the uh, state. So this is quite an achievement. So it highlights another aspect of his personality. The answer does. Then we move on to educational qualification. Please avoid putting educational qualifications in a table. Because what happens is every other information is in a running text. But the moment I put a table, so instead of uh, the text, which is skills and awards coming to my highlight, jumping at me, I have something put in a table which is different from the, the formatting style is different from where every other state that jumps at me and marks I could have five more or five below the average <clears throat> that will not determine whether I'm a good hire or not because they would have definitely con the company would have definitely con you know conducted its technical interview round guest estimate round technical questionnaire round to know my technical competencies. Marks are not a mirror or a clear indicator of my technical strength and stamina because there's so many other aspects that determine it. So I should not highlight it by putting it at the top and I should not highlight them by putting them in a table. These educational qualifications, the title can become qualifications only if I put, if I've acquired certificates which are different in nature, for example, a language certificate, for example, um, having learned or passed a degree course, certificate course in a musical instrument or any other kind of performing art. So I can include that. All this is in reverse chronological order, like you can see. 
there's no need to mention the school just the university is sufficient and you can put the year there's no need to put details of marks which subject got which marks until unless asked for even in that case don't not put it in a table try to put it in a running text so that it does not take away the shine of the actual work that has been done in profile building and resume building for example we had a student who put you know um, her marks in class 10th as very high then um, somewhere around 90s and then 12th very low so she was asked by me in the mock interview round why did you score so low in your class 12th oh my grandmother passed away around this time and i was so disturbed i could not perform well and even my entrance test uh, common engineering entrance test was also uh, gone down the road down the drain because i was so disturbed that is why i'm here so that means she's not very happy of studying where she is and what kind of an attitude would she bring to a company that comes to that institute so instead of saying that we advised her that yes my grandmother passed away when i was to take my class 12th boards and it affected my performance but i quickly pulled myself up i performed well in my entrance test and then the counseling round the interview round that is why i'm here and if you'll see my semester wise performance it is steadily rising once i've come into engineering so my life has not stopped happening to me i have learned how to not let it affect me this is how you preempt questions and prepare answers there was another student again from thapa institute of engineering and technology who had got a very difficult degree in german language he had put it down here in qualifications so in the mock interview of yamaha i asked him why have you learned uh, german language certification oh germany is the hub of automobile industry that is where i want to work if you can see from my project i have built so many racing cars and all so that is where i want to go eventually so german will come handy so that means you are just treating yamaha's job as a training school or a step in the ladder to your dream destination so in any case it in, it implies that you are not going to stick with yamaha for very long that is a wrong answer for that student who was such a superlative performer so what we coached him was to answer that yes german is the language that i have learned because automobile automation automobile industry is of my keen interest and there are certain recent researches or projects which are published in german language but not translated those journals are not translated to english and he can read one or two um, past issues of those journals look them up they were actually there read the past two three issues if there's questions about them answer them in the interview chances are the interviewer would not have read these and say that your growing company like yamaha have would also want to have collaborations with the latest technology based industry company in germany at that time you need someone to speak on your behalf so i'll be that person so that shows foresight commitment to growth and to the company and also personal value that learning of particular course brings to them so after educational qualifications we put up training synopsis until unless it is something very amazing like dr singla sir's daughter here pulled off a, a two week internship at drdo which is not offered defense research and development organization so that was the highlight of her profile so instead of putting her we advised her not to put it here on the third section but put it directly below objective as under in the first section and highlight all her internships that she picked up superlative internships she picked up throughout her profile and they were presented in reverse chronological order one student had done a a project with pgi here uh, which is a national level medical uh, research institute of india and he had done a project in prosthetic artificial um, ai assisted prosthetic limbs so his project was something very amazing a highlight of his uh, profile so instead of putting skills and awards we highlighted that aspect by putting that at the top what i am trying to say here ladies and gentlemen is whatever is the highlight which is genuinely going to make the student stand apart from the others who have scored similar to him or her who have a similar profile that should be presented first so that relevant conversation can happen the student is batting on a comfortable ground in known territory questions come from that area or aspect of his or her profile and when one starts answering uh questions about the areas that they are comfortable with confident in any googly any difficult question any curve ball bowled at them during the interview is also managed well by the student 
so that here comes the third section which i've told you how has to how it has to be placed and if they have been standard nothing uh, you know bright or uh, extraordinary about these trainings or the projects or the internships then they can be placed put in a reverse chronological order i know the time is 11:30 just give me 5 minutes to go through this end part and i will wind up the session the last part is personal details this should come in a resume only if there's space left on the first sheet if there's no space left do not have personal details just have interest these are not hobbies that one pursues if one has the time or pastime activities that one pursues to time pass the time these are interests which are actually cultivated with dedication of time effort energy and resources advise your students to have as narrow interests as possible traveling is a very wide interest hitchhiking shoe shoe string budget traveling traveling with friends traveling in mountains trekking mountain climbing these are very narrow aspects of traveling so instead of reading books tell them advise them what is their actual interest is it reading classical uh, um, english literature is it reading hindi literature is it reading poetry is it reading self help books what is it put that down as an interest and have thorough knowledge of it because the wider the area the more grilling the questions can be the narrower the area chances are the recruiter will not have that kind of specific knowledge to put grilling questions here now here you'll see in the personal details the other things that i want to talk about is date of birth if space is there then we'll mention here the date is put down in the british format because throughout you will see i have used the british writing mechanics because organization utilize all have come with an s rather than a z which is the american writing mechanics so the date have to be according to the writing mechanics that uniformity has to be mentioned has to be maintained if i put father's name i should put mother's name otherwise do not put their name they can ask me and that is a question that i'm comfortable in answering why waste the space on my resume rather put something that they cannot fathom about me but are peaked to ask so this guy had put coin collection as his uh, interest i said okay how many countries coins do you have he said uh, coin and currency collection he said 12 i said abc if you tell me that your father has an industrial manufacturing unit on the outskirts of delhi and you've traveled to 12 countries do you think any reliance would want to hire you they will say no he's just going to treat us company as um, a training school and will soon go and start working with his father so he said no but my father is a single earning member for the 26 people so if we even if we have an industrial unit we have many people who are dependent on us because my elder my father's elder brothers have passed away both their families both my aunts are widows their families are living with us my grandparents are living and so on and so forth as so we might we need to find an opportunity to talk about this in your other as in your interview so that this is already registered so when we talked about interpersonal relationships of golf ball then we talked about this uh, of the industrial unit serving 26 plus family members so it, he was not coming from an affluent background he was coming from a decent background but then i still said that tra traveling to 12 countries having the coins and currencies is still not something that tells me that you're not affluent i still have my doubts about hiring you he said but i have not traveled to these countries i said so then i can also purchase these currencies from the market and make say that i have a hobby of coin collection he said no i have only traveled to nepal rust all the 11 currencies have come from the countries of origin so i said how have you got them he says that i am so passionate about this uh, hobby this interest of mine that all my friends family members know that i like to collect currency so if someone is traveling to any far off place they inform me that such and such is traveling or i am traveling would you want me to bring back the currency for your collection and without any hesitation i have even approached random strangers to request for getting coins and currencies for me so that showed his passion for this but i said what is this passion doing for you it is not creating value in your life he said no it is he said first thing is i am living away from my family here in chandigarh so for me it is very easy to feel dejected depressed and pro given to procrastination so at that time i bring out my coin collection and i 
remind myself of the promise that I've made to myself that one day with my own hard earned money, I am going to use each of these currency notes and coins, travel to these countries, use them, trade them, and perhaps even have such a job where I can stay in these cities, in these countries, and trade in, use this currency for exchange. And that is how I am immediately able to pull myself out of dejection, frustration, procrastination, and get back the groove to perform again. So I said, this is very good value that this coin collection is adding to your life, uh, uh, ABC, and you have found a very good means of keeping yourself motivated, being self-motivated and self-driven, which is a rare quality. So let's put that interest there and be ready to answer this question. Try to bring the recruiter to this question, wherein he or she would want to ask you about the coin collection. Please say this, render this story, because this is going to convince them to hire you. And this is what happened. Languages spoken, number of languages that they speak, please write that. Not known, because known is listening, speaking, reading, writing, that again would require space. Then definitely disclaimer, because everything is put in third person. It should be owned by the person. And that should that comes through self-attestation, but it should be preceded by this very small sentence. And if today... I'm going to Delhi from Chandigarh for an interview. I'll put today's date and the place will not be Delhi. It will be Chandigarh. This is where I'm going from. And right across the date, I put my signatures. And below that, I put my name the way it appears at the top. Ladies and gentlemen, you would have uh, seen, observed, there are two font sizes, 11 and this is 13 and this is bold. The headings are not underlined. There's no colons, nothing. I'm not wasting any space, not making the soft copy heavier. I use the same font style. Times New Roman is a good formal font style to use for such documents. Two font sizes only, but only to make my name stand out, I have used it in a bigger font size, and that is 14. We come to the end of the resume. We've completed all the details. We segregate. The rest of the resume from the footer, again, with a clear line running across from left to the right. And this space is left empty for the recruiter to note down their comments. Even so, there's so much other space in the document. If we cannot complete this, we should try to weed out other details. If not, we can shift. Suppose content from father's details, father's name onwards could not be accommodated on the first sheet. What I do is I shift the entire block from personal details to the next sheet. I have the same line for the header at the top, but the information, contact information is not repeated. Just from where the objective started on the first sheet, I put down personal details and rest of the details, rest of the content. Then I leave the rest of the sheet empty. Then at the assigned space at the bottom for footer, I put this line on the second page as well and I discreetly st staple both the sheets at the top. I will not put any page number, no PT or nothing on the first or the second sheet, no printing on the back side of the resume. Now through my, you know, this interaction, I hope I have been able to uh, develop the importance of resume building and writing and how questions can be predicted if we write a resume well and how we can perform better even in an interview setting. I'm thankful to all of you and uh, if there are any questions, I'm open to them now. Thank you so much for staying for eight minutes long.